What's up, family? Welcome, welcome to Positive Power with Double XI, J. Royce Films. I'm Jerry Royce Live, and you're watching The Red Room with Shea Samuels right here on Music Vision Television. That's right, MVTV-21.com. It's going to be awesome, y'all. So please share this file. It's going to be awesome. You know what's going to be? It's going to be lit. On the camera, action on your cue. Welcome to another episode of The Red Room. I am your host, Shay Samuels. We're so glad to have you here today. My special guest is no stranger to The Red Room. I am excited to introduce to you guys once again, my big brother, Coach Dr. E, Dr. Eric Holmes. How are you, big brother? Um, listen, Coach Shay, the songbird, y'all, the, the TV host of the Red Room. I'm in the Red Room again, y'all. Listen, where you just feeling all the power. I'm doing wonderful. I'm super excited to be here. You know, I was super hyped about it, been talking about it. And so I'm just super excited. You know, I came in from work, had to freshen up change, had a networking virtual event, give my presentation. I said, but oh, y'all, I got to get ready for this taping with the Red Room with my little sis. So I'm doing amazing. I'm excited. And I'm just glad to be back in the Red Room. Yes, and I'm excited to have you back. You know, I was watching some of the previous episodes and I realized, you know, year to year we grow. Every single year we grow. It's like basically every day we grow. Every time we are doing something, you know, new, God is opening up new doors. And it's like we get a chance since the day we met one another to just watch one another grow. How crazy is that? Like it's yeah. so God that we have been able to do that. And, you know, it's funny because even with that, like I was looking at an episode, I was like, his hair was a bit shorter. Mine was a little bit bigger. <laughs> My cheeks were a little bit out here, then mine's, you know, going in. So I'm just happy to see that we are able to grow with one another. So I'm excited. Congratulations on your recent graduation of becoming a certified life coach. That is amazing. It's huge. And just watching God do what he's doing with you, it's all indicative to what we're talking about today, the power of the seed. From the day I met you, Dr. Holmes, from the day I met you, you have been talking about the power of the seed. You have been talking about the seed. You have been talking about purpose. And today, you know, I just wanted to give our viewers a bit of that. I wanted to give them, and I know that they've probably seen it, but there are people who were just tuning in who didn't know us a year ago or two years ago. So I want you to talk about that with me today, if you don't mind. And let's meet <clears throat> some people. <laughs> so, wow. So we're going to talk about the power of the seed. You know, as I was preparing, even, you know, just my week, I thought about um, it was raining outside, you know, and I thought about how seed works. I thought about that, how seed actually works. You know, it's just little teeny, little teeny bud, right? It's not even like it's a, <laughs> now there's some big seed, but we're talking about this little teeny bud of a seed that you literally put in the ground. And some people think, well, I'm just going to put this seed there and then I'm just going to hope that it grows or I'm going to put this seed there and it must grow because that's what seeds do. But there is some work that goes behind the scenes. So talk to us about the work that goes behind that little teeny seed and how to help it grow. Well, one of the things, and you talked about the rain, which is so significant because I always say to people, anybody that understands that rain is significant because once it waters a seed, it helps it to grow. So I'll get excited when it rains. Most people say, oh, it's raining. But guess what? You got to see it from another perspective and you got to see the significance in what rain does. It causes life. It causes things to grow. But even when we deal with the seed, even when he says just the, the, the size of a mustard seed, just it's a grain, that, that small seed, which produces a whole orchid, but there's the process and preparation and dealing with it because even from a natural standpoint, an agricultural standpoint, and when I studied that with Jewish history um, from my doctoral program and study agriculture, it's a lot of work that goes into producing something. And so even for the preparation and the process, 
a farmer from a whole uh, agriculture standpoint, from a way of living, must prepare. There's a process, there's a preparation before he can see, sow, or plant. And so we're trying to skip all of that, but you'll never get something, uh, a product or the producing or the harvest if you don't go through the necessary steps. So here it is. You got to go through the process, the preparation, the getting the ground ready. The preparing it, the toiling, the turning over the dirt, and you got to make sure it's good ground because if it's not good ground, it's not going to produce the harvest you're looking for. And so all of that takes place. Then you can begin to see, sow or plant or whatever you're planting or whatever you're seeding, but you must go through the process and preparation in order to see, sow or plant. And we're trying to skip the process. Yeah. I love that you said that though, because even when you talk about skipping the process, you know, um, even for a childbirth, people don't want to skip that process. Let's get real with it. <laughs> people don't want to skip the process of how that seed gets implanted in order for that child to be conceived. They have a good time with it. And nobody's saying let's bypass the process and just have a baby. So the seed, and it definitely has to have its perfect timing. So when you talk about seed, Dr. E, you know, um, the, 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 you would have really been the only person that I could talk about this with because your direction on how to nurture the seed is phenomenal. When you talk about how to nurture the seed, when you talk about the process, how it begins, you said something really good. You have to really till the land first. And then the Bible also tells us that to everything, there's a season. You even have to be mindful of when you're planting the seed. Just because it's in your hand, just because it's in the store, there's an instruction on the back of that pack that says, this is when you plant it. Plant it any time outside of that, the seed's going to die. Mm -hmm. Do you realize, one time I was actually planting seed, and it was this little pot, right? And I knew what I planted. But in that, I looked over one day and there was another plant growing in it. You know, I had planted that seed probably two years prior and it didn't grow until I started taking care of the other seed. Wow. Come on, pre talk to us. <laughs> so here it is. And that's powerful because what happens is that's why you can't skip the process. Even in my book, when I one of the scriptures to everything, there's a season yeah. and timing and season is critical and key because here it is. I said it could be time, but not season. It could be season, not time. But when you operate in the timing and season of God, you can't go wrong because here's what happens when I was even writing this and I was out of the country. Here's the thing. I saw how they begin all the process and the preparation. They had coffee beans and they teach even the young ones at an early age they're toiling the fields and they're planning and then they took us to the end result of that uh, which was the product the coffee we had but the whole process the whole preparation and the yeah. everything see see uh the thing about it is coach Shea, is that everything doesn't grow in the same climate or the same season there you go i was waiting for you to hit it I so was when you at you bananas and oranges apples you know fruit different fruit we don't all grow in the same time and in season. Ooh, and so you cannot, I worked in OBGYN, so I know about the trimesters. I know about the weeks. I know about the months. I know about the, you know, and when we were dealt with patients that were critical, yeah. that they would have a special need. So yeah. in the time and in season, they couldn't have it too soon because there would be detrimental to the baby. And yeah. so even we look at all of the time and in season that we're now trying to operate out of the time and in season because we all don't grow in the same time and in season. Fruit all, it doesn't all grow in the same time and in season or the climate. Yeah. When I was out of the country, uh, the thing about it was, or in Putacana, and when, when we don't wanna, went on the tour, here it is. The whole climate's different. Yeah. So what may have grown in Baltimore is not growing in Putacana. Yeah. Come on. And it's out of the season. It's out of the climate. So you got to make sure, even when you're planning, and knowing that we have spring that is right after winter. And now there's a difference with winter and spring. It's different seasons. Yeah. What am I planting in the winter that might grow in the spring? Yeah. But can I can it operate or is it in a timing in a season? Yeah. 
You got to make sure you're operating at a time and in a season because you got to realize that set time, that season to everything as Ecclesiastes, to everything, there's a season. And we've got to understand, we've got to operate in that time and in season so we don't miss the harvest. Yeah. And that's really the end result. I love that you said the end result. You guys went through the process, but you got a chance to witness the end result. What I love about the end result is the end result is only to that thing. That doesn't mean that the end result is to you, your life, or whatever it was that you just achieved, but the end result is to that thing. Now you got to go through the process all over again for another group of seed. <laughs> so you done went through the roses. Now it's time for the tulips. <laughs> it's time for the carnations. It's time for all the other seeds. But that end result really, and, and here's the thing, you can't really sit too long on a seed either. Right. So that the, our reality is you can't really sit too long on a seat because um, I, I, you know, when I became a homeowner, I was only 21, never knew anything about uh, growing flowers. I just wanted a flower bed. My neighbor had one. It looked so pretty. And I said, I wanted to do it. I learned so much. And, and, and the reason I'm saying this is because when you're growing, when you decide to grow, there are going to be different things that come upon you that equal seed. So your knowledge bank, bank becomes different. What you want to know becomes different. That's all seed, right? Mm -hmm. So here I am. I own my home. I really should have been out partying. I should have been out. You know, I had two children young. I should have been doing everything that the people at 21 was doing around me. But I'm at the house looking at how I can plant a flower bed. I went out to Home Depot, never been there before. Went out and got a gate <laughs> to, to kind of do, you know, the flower bed uh, consolidated in and then I got out some wood chips and all that kind of stuff but here's what I found interesting you said it and I said wow this is amazing see it's nothing about talking it's, it's something about talking to someone who knows what they're talking about your profession is the seed not just the passion your profession because when you said it I said seeds right on the money when I first planted the seed I could have just went in and bought a pack I could have mm -hmm. just went in and got a pack I started reading the instructions. Why? Because reading is paramount, right? Yes. We have to study to show ourselves approved. We perish for a lack of knowledge. I could have literally bought any seed I wanted to, but because I read the back of it, it said to me, if I plant this in the winter, it is sure to grow in the spring. I said, now how can I plant something in the winter? Because here I am thinking all flowers grow in the summer. But the seed had to be planted ahead of time. <laughs> Come on, Dr. E. The seed and, had it, to be planted ahead of time. And so it's so significant because as flowers begin to bloom in the spring, that's why it's dealing with the timing and season. And you got to know the seasons. You got to know the climate. You got to read the instructions. You got to know what can go in what season, how to plant in this season, how to plant in that season, prepare for the next. Because if you did it out of season, if you did it out of the climate, if you did it without knowing what season to plant, you would not see what was to grow in the next. And so you read the instructions. And so when you read the, and then see, we miss the instructions. We miss what he gives us. And so even when I wrote the power of the seed, here it was that five years ago, and, and it's amazing because actually when he gave me that, not knowing five years later, he would give me the next book that tied right into this when he gave me that. But yeah. it was in the season and in the timing five years later, but he gave it to me five years before. It yeah. wasn't until it was cultivated. It wasn't into the process. And so when I wrote The Power of the Seed, he gave it to me and I looked at a tree in my yard. I asked for a project to be a blessing to ministry, to bless my pastor and first lady. And he, I walked in the kitchen, opened the door to the deck. It was a tree that had changed. I had been here 10 years. Now it's been 15. Wow. And it had changed. He said, the season just changed. The season just changed. He, I turned around. He said, now put it in the book, the power of the sea right then. Yeah. I begin to draw the tree. I begin right there to put it into action because I could have missed the opportunity, the door of opportunity. I could have missed that Cairo's moment. I could have missed that season, that revelation that he gave me if I would have waited. It was a timing. And then here it is, five years later, when he gave me my next book. Isn't it amazing? Because it tied into the tree. 
yeah. it tied into the seed. That's why timing and season is critical, crucial. That's why the timing and season, when we're dealing with the agriculture in the natural and the spiritual, because even in our spiritual walk, we've got to understand if I'm planting, if I'm seeding, if I'm tithing, if I'm sowing. Yeah. It's at the harvest time. But guess what? Here's the thing. It may not happen in the same, it may not happen in that season. So what does the farmer do? He starts the process all over again. Process all over again because he's already done it. The one thing that came to me, the word when you talked about the tree in front of your house, it deals with the root. <laughs> you said the tree and the first word that came to mind was it's dealing with the root. And there is, for some trees, I, I was at the grocery store the other day and I saw this little bulb and in the bulb, um, the bulb was in the water, or so I'm sorry, the bulb was above the water, but then you could see the roots coming out. You could actually see the roots coming out. And so the roots are literally in the flat, in the water. The roots are in the water. So the roots are literally, is what be, what's being nourished. We're watering the seed, but the root is what takes shape and and. and um connects itself to the dirt yes when you you can cut a, a plant off at the stem but if the root is still there the plant is going to grow again if the root let me tell you something i'm gonna give you this visual a long time ago i had weeds growing up in um my uh, the brick of my house I called myself going out to just pull them down because I was so tired of seeing it, right? So I went and a thorn hit my hand. So I, I stopped. I was like, oh man, you know, I, I, got, I got hit with a thorn, bleeding and everything. So I stopped. When I came outside the next day, the, the part that I pulled down, it died. But it was still connected to life. Ooh. Now that'll preach all by itself. The part that I had, it died. I pulled that part. I pulled the root out. I pulled the weed from the root, its life source. And the tree that was still connected to it, how can that be that it was just brown all the way up to here and then the part that was still connected? That's when I got revelation about seed. It is important for us to understand, one, the power of the seed. If you are just tuning in, I'm with Coach Dr. Eric Holmes. He is no stranger to the Red Room. I want to thank y'all for tuning in. We're talking about the power of the seed. Now, Coach Holmes, I'm going to ask you this because you know how important it is. Somebody out there is looking today and they're saying, I understand that I must plant the seed. You know, the Bible says one man plants a seed, another man waters, but God is the nourisher. You said something powerful about the end result. You said, you talked about tithing. You talked about watering. You talked about all the things that we could be doing after planting the seed in order to tap into the harvest. Encourage somebody today with just that. Somebody's stumbling off. Somebody's afraid to plant the seed. Somebody's trying to keep that seed, bury the seed. They feel like if I give this seed up, then I personally am not going to have the root that we're talking about to everything that God has promised me. So how can you encourage someone today with planting that seed and doing just what thus saith the Lord? Plant the seed, water it and allow God to be the nurturer. How do they get to that point? Well, one, let me just go right back to something you said about the vine. Here it is. That's why you got to stay connected to God because he is the vine. That's why you got to stay connected to the life is because if, if you're not connected, then there's the life source. If why you think even in a mother and a baby, the umbilical cord is so important because it's life connected. So when you take off that, now you've taken off life. And so here it is, the same if with the seed. So when it's germinating through the underground process, it's not how long you've been waiting, it's that you've planted. And so once I planted, I sown, but here's the critical part. And to encourage every listener is that with the farmer, even with us in the spiritual and natural, here's what God gave me. Don't get stuff in the middle of the process. How you handle the middle process is going to determine the outcome. And so if after it's planted, after the process, the preparation, the seeding, the sowing, the planting, here's what the farmer gets a revelation. He says, now how? And what do I do with the middle process? Well, I got to water it. I got to nurture it. I got to harvest. And once he does that, as the seed germinates through the underground, 
turnaround process, it gets to the set time and season. Now it's going to produce of that which was sown. And so you may have been waiting, but you got to keep sowing. You may have been in, in the process of up in the middle and nothing's moving. And so what do I do? I keep planning. I keep sowing. I keep praising. I keep tithing. I keep planning. I keep, you got to start this process all over again, because the more you plant, the more you seed, the more you sow, it, it's going to be a greater harvest. And, and like with the farmer, once he sees it, he pulls it and got to start all over again. And so you start the process all over again. You just don't get stuck in the middle of the process, because I promise you this, if you wait long enough, if you wait on God, listen, it's going to happen. We quit too soon and we quit right before the blessing, the miracle, the harvest, and we get stuck in the middle of the process. But the scripture said, listen, you don't, you don't have to miss your harvest for your tears. Mm. We coming out as in Psalm 126. And so you've got to understand, I got something coming. If he says in Genesis, you got to go back to the word. If he says, as long as the earth remains, there shall be seed time and harvest. So when Isaiah picks it up in 55, then he said, listen, he, he gives seed to the sower. And listen, then Paul just jumps all the way to Galatians and pick it up and said, listen, you don't got to get weary. You got a harvest coming. I just don't need you to faint in this season. You're right here at the brink of it. You're right here at the harvest time and we miss it because we quit too soon yeah. but hold on just a little while longer hold on if he's giving it to you because let me tell you it's the work in the in between it's the process in the in between because let just like gold diamonds all of those have to go through the whole process in order to be the diamond to be the gold to be the pearl and so we got to go through the process through the whole process not come out too soon. That's why you cannot allow people to just say, pray me out of this too soon because you might miss what he has. And I shared with you three years ago this month in the midst of the wilderness and the promise. I had to go through the wilderness. The promise was waiting for me on the other side. I planted and I sown. I seeded. And guess what? It was on the other side that the promise was waiting for me. Yeah. But I still had to go through the wilderness to get it. You know, as you were talking, I was just thinking about um, this very thing, and you probably know this already, but I'm going to say it for the viewer today. Um, the planting is what activates the seed. I got I got to say it again, because honestly, when you were talking, I was like, the light bulb went off on me, though. So even in this, I'm still learning. The planting is what activates the seed. The seed sits in that pack the whole entire time, but the seed doesn't grow until it's planted. Until it's planted. Until it's planted. So, and guess what? Here's the other revelation of a cliche is that, it, and you know, they say it's not a cliche. It's really truth. Closed hands don't get fed or closed mouth don't. It's truth. It's revelation. It's not a cliche. You know why? If I never plant, if I never seed or sow, there's nothing coming out of it. And so guess what? I planted, I seeded, I sown. It wasn't until three years later that I'm looking at the manifestation of more and what I have sown and I planted. It. it wasn't until I went through that wilderness experience. And so when people see me now with working and planning and TV and radio and books and all of this, it was a process in preparation, but there was a wilderness and there was a middle process that I had to handle. I had to go through, but I was still sowing. I was still showing up for my assignment. I was still serving. I was still working. I was in the community. I was in the library. So I was still planning. I was still seeding. But now when the manifestation of it comes, because I handled the middle of the process. Yeah. And I want to um, say this for the viewer who was looking on today. And they're saying, okay, I don't have finances to sow. I don't have, um, you know, what I need or, you know, because we put this financial attachment to what we mean by sowing, right? So let me encourage you in this. You can sow your time. You can sow your gifts. You can sow what you have. You know, my mom has a saying, and I love it, and you guys will hear me say this all the time. My mom said, I used to be a size six. I'm not anymore. So go to your closet and get those size sixes that you're not getting in no more, thinking at the age of 56, even maybe at the age of 18, that you're going to get back into them. Start giving those clothes away because that is sewing. 
what you give, you're going to get back a hundredfold regardless. I don't care what it is. I've heard of people giving their whole wardrobe away and people didn't understand why that was happening or how someone could do that. But you know what? They started getting new and I mean new, new. It wasn't just somebody gave another pair of pants, it came back in extra measure. So I want you to be aware, it's not just about the finances. God is gonna bless you how you bless others, but a hundredfold. I wanna remind you of Job. Go ahead, go ahead, Coach E, because I see- Oh, I was gonna let you finish because I'm gonna I'm a, I'm a shift and show you how what you just said and the power of it. And here it is. Three years ago, when I was in between positions, and when you talked about, and I say this to people all the time, favor will take you where people and money can't. Yeah. And it's not always about money, but favor. It's not always about money, but exposure. But here's the thing. So in between those positions, four months had to operate in faith and no finance. So here it was. I planted, I seeded, I sold. So as the old folks would say, I've sent my timber up. And so now that I need it, I can pull it down. But guess what? In the midst of those four months, I was sowing my time. I was sowing, not only that, in the community, I was in a library. I was helping, which opened up. I was teaching at the library door book signings in the library to my <laughs> books are now in the library but here's the thing i was sewing i was showing up for my assignment though i didn't have the finances like i wanted like i'm used to giving but here's the thing he gave me something else he gave me time he gave me service he gave me helping people i emptied my entire cupboards out to help a mother and her three children but can i tell you they didn't know new towels all of this stuff that they needed when my buddy called me who works for the police department i filled up everything brand new towels hold that thought i'm so sorry we got to have you back we got to have you back we got to have you back because guess what you're gonna get somebody so hyped up and only have like two seconds to talk about it so we have to have you back i want to thank you for being another a guest again on the show you are so powerful. We love you so much. I got to go ahead and wrap up the show, but I thank you again for being on with us. We will have you back again. Look, ladies and gentlemen, that is the Red Room. We talked about the power of the seed with Coach Dr. E, and he will definitely be back. Until next time, we will see you guys on the next episode. It's about eight in the morning, I'm just waking up. Got the Folgers on blue, about to fill my cup. While I'm looking out the window, let the sun come up. I'm good. I'm good. I'm about to get my day started. Off to work, about to make them dollars. If only you knew what I've been through, you would smile and say that I'm good. Got a good job, I'm good. My bills are paid out good. And my family's good My health is good I thank God that I'm good I got a good job I'm good And my bills are paid out I'm good. I got food on the table I know that he's able Thank God I'm good yeah. I thank God I'm I'm on my way. I'm on my way. I thank God I'm good.